Hello. I hope you're safe and sound. Today is my uh, 22nd lecture. I've been on board now and this lecture is dedicated to again all the seafarers as a legacy of we can say of my past experience or what have I've gone through. Furthermore, I really appreciate your guys support on my YouTube channel which has in a way not only with my enthusiasm but motivated me to come up with new things and impart in a cohesive collective manner. Today as we speak besides my last 21 lectures which were focused on ship handling, hydrodynamics. But this particular 22nd lecture is again dedicated to all the mariners coming out with loads of high risk observations and the fertility which has been a cause of concern as far as the seafarer and the maritime fraternity is concerned. Therefore, this particular lecture is based on the gas measuring instruments, coming with the evolution of it, starting right from the beginning, what actually started with the, 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 this particular thing, especially on the tanker industry. So we are going to talk about right from the basics till such time how we are, where we are, which will be a kind of an amalgamation of the gas measuring instruments, the explosive atmosphere, as well as the importance of enclosed space entry, which has to be endorsed by the enclosed space entry permit. So we will go in a sequential manner, and I'm on board the vessel presently, and I thought of just imparting, just to utilize my some time, some of my productive time, and. As we speak, I would like to introduce you to my crew, which is sitting over here. Uh, the camera swings here, and they are my crew, and we are going to have a kind of a workshop. By virtue of which, we will be able to explain what are the intricacies, what are the, the things which are involved in this particular lecture. So, gentlemen, I hope you all are safe and sound. How's the Josh? Hi, Hi sir. sir. Good. So, as you can see, my crew is well motiv motivated and they're happy by grace of God and their families are also ill and hearty. So, gentlemen, today what we talk about is the beginning of the era. I'll share with you way back approximately four decades ago. When we did not have the gas measuring instruments, I believe I've shared with a few of my personal, my officers, what we used to do. But none of these gas measuring instruments were there. We used to have, I remember when I was a cadet, we used to have on board tankers a case dedicated to the birds. And what we used to do, I recall my those days as a cadet, we used to have a small cage where we used to take small, you know, bird, maybe chirping bird, some, any X, Y, Z, feed that bird and put him in the cage and pray to God that when we lower him into the tank, he should come out alive. That is after the tank washing, everything is done. That is before the mandatory procedures were to be implemented or were to take place. From that era, we have come out today with the you know, fascinating combustible gas measure, uh, measurement instruments, personal gas monitors, Traeger tubes, etc., etc. Traeger and Castell. Now, the company which actually pioneered into it was MSC, Mine Safety Appliances, which goes back to the coal mines. Mines, coal mines, the coal has the component of methane. So they started measuring and that's how it got 
harmonize with the tanker industry and they were the first one who pioneered into the gas measuring instrument name explosive meter. For last approximately 12-13 years as I recall, explosive meters have become redundant. The reason we'll talk about it when we go about through the flammability parcel diagram. I'll come to it step by step. The reason I took this opportunity to explain my fellow people on both the ship and we are going to broadcast this live, uh, this on the YouTube also is because there have been so many fatalities which are taking place because of lapses and lack of understanding as far as the procedural things are concerned coming to the thing of or the documentation of enclosed space entry. Now, enclosed space entry permit, remember, and I urge all of you to ensure that when you guys are signing the enclosed space entry permit, we carry out the risk assessment, toolbox meeting, GHA, everything which I had already explained to you during my last lecture on PWTS. So you guys must understand the importance of when the people, the workforce, the people who are going into the particular enclosed space entry, when you're signing it, please do not sign your death warrant. You have a right to ask. When the GHA detailed risk assessment and or toolbox meeting is concerned, the people who are involved in the particular uh, task of enclosed space entry. Okay, so we clear here as per the last lecture what we had imparted upon permit to work system. Right, we are clear on this. Okay, I need to. Yeah, yes, no. Yes, yes, sir. yes, sir. Okay. Now, coming to this flammability parcel diagram. Now, this is the benchmark on how, where, and why we come into the these gadgets of gas measuring instruments. I will go with the basics as you can see on the y-axis we have hydrocarbon percentage by volume. On the x-axis we have oxygen percentage by volume. Now, let's try to, before I come to it, I'm going to come step by step. The question I put in earlier you guys, quite a few of you guys must have seen explosive meters or might have used it. Okay. Explosive meter, why it was made redundant or taken out of the industry for two main reasons. One is the explosive meter cannot be used in an inerted atmosphere use this in an inerted atmosphere when we talk about the IgG and all that, it will it will get bugged up, it will not function. Whereas a tank scope can work in both, in both places. That is case number one. Number two, as we go to the flammability parcel diagram, you can see here at this point, this is approximately <coughs> one decimal four percent of HC by volume. One decimal four percent when I talk about this particular thing, this approximately it is coming to one decimal four percent by volume. Which in a good explosive meter was equated to hundred percent in the end. So try to understand. One decimal four percent by volume on the flammability parcel diagram was equated to 100% of helium. Now, when the chief officer or the chief engineer or somebody, a uh, responsible person sends 
another junior officer or somebody to go and check the gas content of one tank. If the HC percent in the tank is more than 1.4 percent by volume, what would happen? The explosive meter will go from zero to 100 and back. And if the person who is taking or carrying out the measurement of the gases, let's say the LEL, if he has not paid attention, what he'll report? Okay, Chief Officer or Chief Engineer or whomsoever he's addressing, the gas, the LEL is zero. And that had led to catastrophic scenarios. By virtue of which there had been loads of fatalities. And that was the main reason why explosive meters were withdrawn. Now we have the combustible gas meter which is incorporated up to here. In other words, in case if the HC percentage by volume as per this flammability parcel diagram is more than one decimal four percent it will show HC maybe 1.82 percent whatever it is when it comes below 1.4 percent you will see the LEL correct are we on the same page yes. so that was the main reason why explosive meter was withdrawn and today we have a tank scope and a combination combustible gas meter which measures H2S and few other gases, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So that was, this is something I'm talking about, the evolution, how it started working. Now, I'm going to club this workshop and lecture in a perhaps kind of a systematic manner where we have team A, just show, cameraman, please show, team A, group A is led by the Chief Officer, Mr. Abhay. Group B, led by the Chief Engineer, Mr. Tenju Korean, and you guys will follow. Now the idea of conducting this workshop is to make you aware of the hazards associated with the gases and the enclosed space entry permits. Before I proceed, Chief Officer, raise your hand. Now, if you are supposed to carry out the tank washing, let's say you're carrying hydrocarbons, Annex 1 cargo, okay? We finished discharge in one port, and now we are en route, let's run a long passage, we, we had a cargo like uh, Mogas or Nafta or something. Now, how do you start with the tank cleaning operations? Tell me. First of all, we will ensure that the Speak tank... Speak louder. First of all, we have to ensure that the atmosphere in the tank is uh, conducted to conduct the... conducive to conduct the tank cleaning. How do you know? Because the tanks are inerted. Tanks are inerted. The tanks are inerted and the oxygen content is below this uh, flammable... Uh, that okay, let me start with it. When you do the prior to starting with the tank cleaning operations, first, of course, we have ITG or ITS, whatever it is, the tanks were inert, are inerted. When we discharge the cargo, we were pumping in IG at the same time when we were carrying out the discharge, right? Now, the tanks are inerted. So when we sail out, what we do first? Because at the time or during the discharge mode, the IGG or IGS, which are, whichever mode we have, which is being inducted into the tanks at the time of discharge, would be around four or five percent O2 level, right? So when we sail out, what we do first? When we sail out of the port, what do we what do we do first? We purge out the mold. What purge out? 
We already have four to five percent of O2 in the tank. Check the hydrocarbon. How much hydrocarbon? What do you mean hydrocarbon? Two percent below two percent. No. And then you will check the O2 content. O2 content. All the IG. If the O2 content of the IG is below eight percent, as per IMO, and as per the standard practice, and most of the companies what they recommend should be around five percent, approximately. It should not be below four percent because otherwise you will have all smoke inside the tank. So when the O2 content is around four plus or five percent or five and a half percent, you are okay. You can carry out the tank washing. At the same time, you are using the inert gas. Okay. Now you have washed the tank with a closed cycle from tank to slop. You understand closed cycle. Now what is the next thing you do? Negative. Once the tanks are washed, now we need to carry out the I've written it here purging. purging. And what do we do with the purging? We bring the HC to below 2% by volume. Just pick it up. We bring the HC to 2% below. 2% uh, by volume below. And that is what is here. You see here. 2% comes somewhere here. Why we bring it to 2% below volume? Uh, by volume. So we purge the tank to bring the HC 2% below, below 2% by volume before we inject the air. Now if you happen to have been doing it when it is around 4% or 4.5% here, you see this is known as critical dilution. In other words that you can anytime fall into the flammability parcel diagram mixture. Therefore, as per his court, it should be below 2% by volume. When you do the 2% by volume, one is this is by dilution by inert gas. So therefore, what we are doing? We are purging the tank with the inert gas. When the HC is below 2% by volume, now we can inject the air and we are clear of the flammability parcel diagram. Clear? Okay, <clears throat> so now, When we do, uh, coming to the beginning, we sail out from port. The tanks were inerted because we were using inert gas. Once we sailed out, the tanks were inerted. We again check the O2 content of tank. As per IMO, it should be below 8% by volume. 8% by volume here. Okay. Let's say five or six percent, what we said, or four, five, or five, six percent. Now you can inject the water for the cleaning, right? So we are in safe atmosphere. Once your tank washing, the throughput and the cycles are done, as per your tank cleaning manual, cow manual, or PNA manual. You are, I'm, I'm talking about Annex One, which is more, uh, you know. <coughs> which has more implications for the tank cleaning operation. So we did the closed cycle. Means we first charge the slop tank, which is also inerted. We do closed cycle. We, we do the uh, machine uh, swinging, three, four machines, whatever machines you have. As per the manual, we strip out this thing back into the slop. That is known as closed cycle. Once that is done, now we need to push the tank with the inert gas till such time the HC percentage of volume is below 2%. That is, as per this graph, this approximate 2% below that. Once that is done, then it is safe enough to commence the gas ring or inject the air, like it says, dilution with air. Right? 
and one more thing when you bring it below two percent by volume it has two advantages number one the safety point of view that you will not come into this critical dilution thing and you will not you'll be well clear of the flammability parcel diagram number two your gas being will be faster and effective so idly speaking as i said earlier if i bring the hc to one decimal four person by volume in other words at that point of time my lel is 100 person what i would do i would try to bring it to approximately one person so i'm getting clear of the lel limit also right now what all i've explained anybody has any questions to ask please do before i proceed further Come on, gentlemen. Any doubt? Any question? Or should I proceed further? Okay. So now we have brought, as per the flammability parcel diagram, the HC percentage to let's say one percent or one point one percent, whatever it is. So we are well clear of this, and we can easily inject the air by the IG blower or the portable blowers, whatever it is that we. We will not be coming into this flammability parcel diagram. Well, now when we do the gas stream, how do we proceed? Tell me. Anybody would like to clap and please say, "Let's not be mute spectators." Come on, tell me. Anybody, gentlemen. Okay, now once we do that, we come into the LEL limit, LEL range. We are injecting the air. We are checking the LEL and the O2. As far as practicable, practicable, the LEL percentage should be zero, nada zero. O2, how much? 20 decimal line person. Once that is done, means what is the next thing we need to do? We have checked the <coughs> LEL and O2 in that particular time. Let's say LEL at zero, O2 20.9. What else we need to do? Tell me. Come on, guys. Toxic gases like H2. Fantastic. Excellent third officer, Mr. Jeff Prakash. Yes. So that we see from where do we refer to? MSDS. MSDS. MSDS will tell you what was the comp uh, composition of the cargo which we carried. And basis that only we will be mentioning this in the enclosed space entry permit. I'll come to that later, but I'm just trying to club in together so we know we are coming together. Very good, Jeff Prakash. So, when we do that, we carry out first LEL is zero, O2 20 decimal line person. Let me have a sip of water. LEL 0, 4 to 20 decimal line person. Now we need to check for the toxic gases. And that's where we come to the Draeger or gastric, the tubes what we have, they are rated. So we need to check at different points the toxic gases which is prescribed as per MHTS. All right. Once that is done, then what do we check? We check TLV, threshold limit value. We check STEL. What is STEL? Exposure limit. What else we check? Ceiling. Ceiling value. TWA, time weighted average. 
balance all those parameters are in range and where do we get all these information MSDs. MSDs. correct so we check with that once all that is done then we can prepare the time for man entry of course coming to those procedural things that the gas ring is to be carried out and at the time of checking atmosphere the, the gas ring should be stopped for 10 minutes why 10 15 minutes why chief officer tell me Yeah, Prakash. Sir, to settle down the tank. To, 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 in other words, when we are taking the gas readings, there should not be any turbulence in the tank. So, before we check the subsequent gas reading for the enclosed space entry permit, we must make sure that the gas ring is stopped for 10 to 15 minutes so the turbulence is settled down. We don't get a spurious of false readings okay now coming to now the, the, the diagram this plumbability parcel diagram I have drawn I know people have drawn many a times I have seen many a times now try to understand what is this this is dilution by IG so we are safe. We are not coming anywhere near the flammability parcel diagram. This is around 11, 12 percent approximately dilution by air. This is the criticality of it starting from here means at this range when it is O2, uh, SC 7 decimal 2 percent and O2 is around approximately 12 odd percent, 11.2 to 12 percent. That's known as car tuning point. Anybody knows what is car tuning point? Good old days when we did not have uh, uh, the fuel injection system in our vehicles, we used to have carburetors, right? The mechanic used to adjust the fuel and air combination so that the ignition takes place. So we come to this point at this particular age when the HC by volume is 7 decimal 2 percent and O2 is approximately 11 to 12 percent. At that range, we have entered the flammability parcel diagram and by such time we exit at this point of time the O2 is approximately 90% and the HC is approximately 2% little more than 2% or 2% by volume Chief officer understood I need to hear yes sir okay now Purging, we talked about inerting, gas ring, we talked about. Right now, what are the methods for gas ring? Speak louder, who's so busy, please. Displacement and dilution. What is displacement? What is displacement, gentlemen? Displace the atmosphere inside with the new. How? So what is the distinction between displacement and dilution? In displacement, we eject out the inner atmosphere. How? So we, from the bottom side. From the bottom side we put a suit and from outside we escape that air. So how do we inject air? From where? From top or from bottom? In displacement? From bottom side. From down we are taking out the air and from top we are... Down you are taking out air. How? My question is... In displacement, what do we do? Do we pump in the air from top or do we pump in the air from bottom? bottom. 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 Correct. Why now see dilution uh, displacement is it takes longer time but it is more effective. Any idea why? Because we are taking out the complete because the hydrocarbons are heavier than air they will settle down when we displace this from the bottom let's say <coughs> there's a tank we have the air ingresses from the bottom 
and the air exit is on the forward end because after it forward ends it extreme end. So what it is doing? It is flushing the air from the bottom and purging it out through the forward most thing. So it may take time, but it is more effective that you almost you know purged out all the toxic things from the tire. What is dilution? Dilution is when you pump in the blower with the blower, with the turbulence, the flushing takes place. Dilution is a bit faster. But effectiveness of dilution shall be monitored. Because what happens when you pump in the air from let's say top, let's say aft section of the tank and open the forward section of the tank. So because of the lower pressure, the air ingress, it is getting with the turbulence out. <clears throat> One more thing. Now, perhaps I'm coming to your side. If we talk about the tank cleaning and all those things, we started here, we, we came to uh, let's say uh, O2 content initially less than say 8% by IMO by practice should be 5 to 6 percent right what all we discussed same thing I'm writing now the problem comes basically in bunker tanks Parasa, when did, uh, or any of the engineers, I'd like you to tell me, when did you guys do the last try walking? Six months. Six months. You were there, right? Now, when you do the dry docking, before we, or before the vessel proceeds towards the dry dock, what happens? We need to empty all the tanks. Most of the tanks will You have to collect your all fuel into one single tank? And light, light condition. That is it. Now I'm coming from the bunkering point. What you have to do, you have to collect all the fuel, residual fuel into one particular tank. Besides the deck side tanks to be gas free, you also will have to do the gas wing of your bunker tanks. Correct? Right. Now try to understand because the bunker tanks are not protected with the IG. Right? You don't have IG. Correct. Now, how do you do it? So usually in dry dock, they will put the portable blower. The vessel will not be allowed to enter the port till such time the gas chemist, who is authorized by the port, comes and checks that the, uh, the, the vessel is gas free. You will have to do something by yourself before we get the gas free certificate from the chemist. What we are doing is, we will open there may be two manual doors. So we used to put blowers from our side. Okay. And that's where the problem lies. I'll show you why. Jay Prakash, you have anything to say? Please say. No, you did a good job. Thank you. Now, the problem lies with the bunker tank. Cleaning or gas ring. Let me put it gas ring also. What happens, Bolasa, in your case? Because you don't have inert gas, so your LSMGO, VLSFO, whatever fuel you have, also constitutes of the hydrocarbons. Now, when you are injecting the air, you are basically coming from here. So you see the criticality of this. When you are diluting with air until here, about 11.2 or 12 percent here, till such time it is here and till you come to cartooning point, you, you are free. After that, you come into a dangerous atmosphere from approximately 7.2 percent of HC till 
you come to around 2% and O2 percentage that time is around 20, 19%. You can note down this. So when next time you're doing it, you know the magical figures. You know the magical figures when you're entering the flammability parcel diagram. That's where you're going to be careful. Now, again, you have an option either to do the dilution or displacement. Which one you have been doing in past? You can do the displacement also because now in the market you have reversible blowers also. Has anybody seen? which works on this way and opposite also. So what you can do is, let's say on the half side of your tank, you rig up the blower which can go in the reverse, means being on the extraction mode. Right? Rig up the blower, put a shoot down. Okay? So what you are doing? You are doing the displacement with the extraction. As I said, you get nowadays those blowers in the market which can work both the directions, clockwise, anti-clockwise means pumping in air and extraction also. You understand? So when you rig up the blower, you rig up the chute also. So lead it to a, approximately say about a, close to one meter above the tank top. You know the measurement of the tank, how deep the tank is. When you do that, you are doing the displacement. It will be more effective. It may take longer time, of course. Because in your bunker tank, especially a VLSF4 tank or even the, the LSMG tank, you'll have a certain amount of sludge. Right? The point to ponder here is the sides here entering at this plumbability parcel diagram from 7.2 percent till approximately 2 plus percent and O2, uh, 2 percent and O2 20, 19 percent and uh, uh, here O2 is 11.2, 12 percent. You also have the problem with the static electricity. Besides injecting the air from here because you don't have much options, you have to be careful of static electricity. In other words, when you have a, let's say, a small bunker tank, always check the rated capacity of the blower, portable blower you are installing on top. Let's say if you're, uh, what is the size of your smallest bunker tank, Barasa, here? 70 cubits. 70 cubits. 70. 70. You have to check the rating of the blower with respect to the tank. I know we don't have many options many a times, most of the times, because the air extraction and or ingress, in other words, be it the displacement method or the dilution method, if the air displacement or dilution is faster, normally it is rated up to 1.25. Up to 1 means if you have, <coughs> because the blowers they have the rating also, the portable blowers which you put. If it is more than that, you are generating also static electricity. So you have a double whammy. One is because of the gas composition, the gas mixture, you're entering into the flammability parcel diagram. Plus, if your blower rating is higher, 